Hi everyone and welcome. If you're new and you've never seen my channel before, well, bless your soul. Uh, <laughs> welcome. Um, welcome to my strange world. Um, you are totally welcome here and I'm so glad that you dropped by. Um, for everyone else, you, yeah, hey, what's up? Good to see you. Uh, <laughs> So this week I've been having so much fun with this idea of coming on, you know, and taking um, the idea that came from the t the hashtag um, uh, tea topic treat tarot that was started by Tangerine Layla the Sleepy Oracle, and just taking that forward and and playing with it because it's such a fun space to be in, isn't it? So today um, I have my as promised, my little, my black cat mug that my friend Nikki made. Um, and it's, it's such a raw, lovely, lovely little mug. And you can kind of see the purple in the cat's eyes and around the back of it. It's a sweet little mug. I really like it. And it, it still isn't tea. It's my coffee and it's now getting cold because I keep thinking I'm going to drink it and then something else happens and I tried recording this once and my phone was blowing up with messages, none of which were urgent. So I just decided to go ahead and switch it off, get through the video and switch it back on. And, uh, and thus my coffee got cold. Cause before that I was trying to answer all the text messages and it wasn't, it was just, it was kind of not working out. You know how that goes? Ah, coffee. Um, so, <laughs> uh, and my treat is what's left. <laughs> It's what's left of my um, peanut butter and jelly sandwich, um, which is on a sprouted grain bread, not made from wheat. I can't remember what the grains are, but they're not. It's like quinoa and, you know, grainy doodah grains that are supposed to be healthy. And then it's homemade peanut butter that Tom and I make at home and then some homemade jam that we were gifted. So, and it is pretty tasty. And who doesn't like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Um, still got some peanut butter happening back there. Never take a bite on camera. I know this. I trained. You're not supposed to take a bite on camera. Uh, rogue actors. Rogue actors. So I've had so much fun this month. Well, fun. You know, relatively speaking. <laughs> so, you know, it's always relative. Um, working with uh, the Falarcos Tarot and the Marielle Tarot. Because I, I, I have my own trimmed copy of the first edition of the Marielle that I really enjoy reading with for myself. And um, I also have, you know, been working with the Falarcos Tarot. Last month was such a stinker of a month with so many, like, huge um, life-altering, course-altering events that came up that I still don't feel quite ready to talk about. But believe me when I say, as hard as they were, they were the things that I really deeply appreciate and feel good about now. It took me a while, right? Because when, when really hard, awful things happen, taking them in and processing them in a way that's appropriate is difficult. But, you know, honestly, working with the Marielle and working with the Falarcos like as it was just starting to kind of shift was was really the right thing and that deck those decks together the way they've combined is kind of astonishing I mean but at the first of the month you know they weren't I couldn't see how they were dancing together as easily but I was also really in a difficult space as the space itself in my life has opened up so too has the communication, at least or my perception, of the communication between those two decks. So the working with them has become incredibly rewarding because they seem to be talking together in a way that is incredibly, you know, conversational and um, it's just on, they're just, it's, it's beautiful. They seem to be dialoguing with one another um, in order to communicate with me and you know, my daily draws are less about, I would say less about 
at this moment learning cards or learning the decks and more about genuinely seeking insight and guidance into like what am I doing <laughs> what is my path unfolding to be about and you know how am I within that path so it's not it's deep work I guess in other words it's 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 not so much I mean I remember at the beginning of the year I was like oh I'll just choose one card a day and focus on it and you know, use that method to learn new decks and learn. And I realized like, no, because that's great. It's lovely to get one card. But when you, what you're really needing is the guidance, you just, I think it's natural at some point to just start reading three together because three is such a helpful number. So I've been reading three of each, each deck and, um, the way they talk is just amazing. Um, and as I've been doing that, <clears throat> Something else that I've started to find is that a lot of the things that have begun to unfold in my path and in my career and in my life and my soul um, over the last seven or eight years, or, yeah, seven, seven years, interesting, um, they're all kind of there's a need to really revisit some of those experiences very deeply. And as I'm doing that, I'm beginning to connect them to various different experiences that have taken place throughout my life. And I'm seeing some interesting patterns and some interesting, um, I want to call it synchronicities. They're, they're things that coincide, but they're not coincidental. They're, they're more synchronous. They're starting to understand some synchronicities that have taken place that I really couldn't put together or understand um, before now. And that feels really important. Um, so all of that is just to say that <clears throat> the kind of decks that I'm working with for myself is, an, you know, very different than what I'm wanting to work with for clients. And that's often the case anyway. I still read for the for clients with the Marielle regularly, but I don't always read with darker decks, right? Because the Marielle is a lot for people to take and... I don't, you know, I, I can feel, I can tell when I'm working with a particular client, you know, face to face. It's less that way with, with, um, with internet readings and, and so on. But it, you know, for myself, the deeper decks is, th that's where I need to go. So I was chatting the other night with, this is all so long and ridiculous and so unnecessary, but I was talking to Diane from Indigo Moon Woman. And as we were talking about it, she said, um, have you, you know, those, the, that Falarcos reminds me a lot of the Tarot of the She. And the Tarot of the She is a deck that I had encountered, I don't know, maybe back in December or January. And I put it on my list and then have just not felt called to purchase it until she mentioned it. And when she mentioned it, I thought, oh, wow, I forgot all about that deck. And some of the things that have come up in my life that I'm trying to assimilate and understand feel intimately related to working with the realm of what I guess in the West we would call the Fae. Um, and I think in the Tibetan tradition, they call it, um, they would call it Dakinis or they would call it, um, Sambhogakaya, the realm of Sambhogakaya. So it's the realm of energy. So Dharmakaya is the formless realm. Um, Sambhogakaya is the energetic realm. And then Nirmanakaya is the earthly realm. So it's, you know, it is the realm of beings that are spirit. So, <clears throat> and, and who may or may not incarnate in physical body. So, um, you know, like all things, you know, like with humans, there are good and bad humans. And with, I, I, I think, I think, I'm pretty sure, with the Fae and, and the Dakinis, who I, I feel strongly come from the same, you know, they are earth spirits and spirits that you see around places and locations. And, you know, what I've observed is they seem to be the same thing. That seems to be the same thing. Um, so that said, uh... I decided to go ahead and get the Tarot of the She. And, you know, like I've been doing, we're just going to pull it out and have a look. You know, just uh, not make a formal unboxing. Oh, wow. 
but just like a an informal unboxing. Why not? It was so much fun the other day with the Marielle with that second edition. And this arrived yesterday, so the insight, this is an older deck. Like I got it on Amazon for 20 bucks. Can't beat it, right? Um and yeah, it's it is Schiffer Red Feather, but not as we know it. Um it has a nice little book, which I look forward to, to reading and taking in. Um, wow. She's written a nice little book. And also, it's interesting to me, too, she lives on, uh, let's see if it says here. Um, yeah, she lives in Cornwall. Um in the UK and uh, or she she may have moved to Devon but I know she she lives in that region and it's such a magical part of the world and part of the British Isles as well I lived there for such a long time so it's got this little slip on the back but unlike a lot of Schiffer decks it's not having that little thing that it does where the back card is messed up which is I guess fine in this case anyway because that's a title card anyway, on the back, which is interesting. So when you open the box, it's just the fool on the top. And there's the Schiffer card. So yeah, now we've got that. So yeah, wow, I've never seen this deck before and it's insane. I love this um, spiral on the back. It looks like the Choku Ray from, uh, from Reiki. I bet it's intended that way as well. But anyway, that's right side. It makes it not invertible, you know, not reversible as easily, which I don't really mind. Um, wow, so cool. Groovy card stock. Oh, here we go. Here's our fool. Ooh. Magician. Wow, I love that High Priestess. They're really glossy and really like thick cardstock. They don't have any edging on them, which is great because it means I can put my own edging on it. Ooh, where are we? Here we are. High pre. Wow, what is going on with my computer today? Like, do, 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 go that way, this way. How do I do this? What do I do? No, I need to go this way. Here we go. There's a little more screen space. <laughs> like, I'm all over the shop today, um, Empress. So some of you probably already really know this deck very well, um, and probably many of you even own it. Very glossy, Elder. Oh, right, so here's our Hierophant. I like that he's an Elder. Okay, the Lovers. Chariot. Okay. Wow, Justice. The Hermit. I guess I could just lift them up and show them that way because we're getting sticky. There's Hermit. Oh. <clears throat> do da, do da. <laughs> It's like that today. Here's the Wheel of Fortune. Wow. Strength. Oh my gosh. So I know I'm going to have a lot to say about these as time goes forward. I'm curious about how she's using this um, energetic spiral. Love that death card. Ooh, look at this temperance. Okay, and the devil. I'd already seen the devil card. Tower. Oh, the star. You know, I gotta say this. So a lot of these faces in here look slightly alien, which is interesting. So there's a podcast I follow that I might have to link below. Um, 
a couple of them actually, and, and an author who's written a book. Actually, me, I'll just link the author. So there's an author who's written a book um, about the crossover space between alien abduction and um, being sort of taken away by the fairies. And the similarities there are really striking. Um, the moon. And if anyone has ever read a book, there's a book called, it's by Jacques Vallée, the name of which is escaping me at the moment, um, Passport to Magonia. If you're interested in this phenomena, that is a really fascinating book. Judgment. The world. Wow. These are deep. Air. Hmm. Wow, I'm curious about how these dreamers I wasn't sure exactly what we're looking at here. Okay, Dreamer 4. Okay, so there's a... Wow. Huh, so there's something different. I love that. There's something different in the way that Emily Carding has structured this deck. Oh, Oh, I love that. Okay, I get it. All right, that's how she's naming the suits. Because I was like, well, gee, I, I remember seeing air, but, and this kind of reminds me of the Six of Swords. <laughs> so there we go. And I get it, air, dreams, etc. That makes sense. Okay. I love it when creators do that. And okay, we've got these keywords, a coward betrays. Oh, wow. So there's some definite storytelling happening in here. Yeah. Yep. Wow, web of mirrors. Nightmare. Mm. Jeez. Yeah, I know about that. Desolation. There's our ten of swords. Yep. That's totally how that feels. I mean, that's that's definitely the experience. But, you know, I experience things like this, like, you know, in terms of the, the very landscape being alive and watching me and kind of witnessing things. Anybody else have that? It's kind of a weird... It's weird, but it kind of... All, it's, always, it's always just been the way I, I've been. So, okay, Dreamer Princess... Yeah, Dreamer Princess, this would be Paige. Gift of Telling. Wow, Dreamer Prince. Gift of Liberty, so that's our knight. I love the way this is structured. Gift of Reason. Wow, and she's sitting on books. And she's doing a Hamlet contemplating. <laughs> wow. Okay, Dreamer King. So the King of Swords. Yeah, and he's got his sword and he's on a dragon. Wow. All right, so now we have fire. So that makes sense. So we have fire, the ace. And then we have the two. That's amazing. Three. Warrior four. Yeah, very four of wands, that one. Okay, five. Action frustrated, yep. Okay, warrior six. No foe too great. We'll get them. 
Warrior seven, a hero's challenge. I like that. Wow. Okay, warrior eight. Dragon flight. Oh my gosh. Yeah, look at that. Eight of wands. That's really cool. Wow. Okay, warrior nine. The guardian. Warrior 10, the great task. Wow, that's a very, I like that interpretation of the 10 of wands. Yeah. Yeah, that comes out sometimes a lot in interpretation too for me when I'm reading for people. So the warrior princess, courage. Warrior prince is the gift of spirit. Warrior Queen, Gift of Charm. Oh, I like that. Huh. There's so much to unpick in here. Wow. So the Gift of Glory. The Dancer, which is the Ace of Water. So this is the Dancers, um, <clears throat> the Suit of Dancers. So the Two of Cups. Three, four, five. Yeah, where loss resides. Ooh, that's a good five of cups. Yeah. I love, I love that the person is watching that boat go away. So there's an exercise in theater, you know, physical theater, um, from the tradition of Jacques Lecoq, for anybody who knows much about any, you know, theater traditions. And one of the things that you have to learn in order to really embody, I mean, there's a lot of things that he's wanting you to learn to embody with this particular exercise, but one of the things is, you know, the ability to understand the classical, like, non-20th slash 21st century world. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I mean, he died in the 20th century. He's not alive now. Um, he died in the year 2000, maybe. But he um, would make people do an exercise where they're running to catch a boat, and then they don't catch it, and they have to watch the boat. And it's imaginary, you know, and they have to watch that boat sail away using the imagination and physically allow that to affect the body. So it's kind of, it's one of those exercises that you do over and over again, because trying to get that and understand it physically with simplicity enough to convey it is not easy. Born of joy. So it's learning to embody that five of cups. Yeah, illusion depths. Escaping stagnation. Wow. That is so true. Wow. I'm loving this. Oh my goodness. Make a wish. Heart song. Wow. Okay, and then, oh, no, we've got the, the court card. So the princess. So expression. It's the knight, gift of passion. Oh, so that's the knight of cups. Wow. Oh, that's amazing. Gift of truth. Heart truth. Wow. And the Dancer King, Gift of Wisdom. Wow. Okay, so Earth, the Maker. Responsibility.
Oh, <laughs> I love this. The greedy tree. That's wonderful. The greedy tree. Oh, wow. Winter's bite. Wow. That's so visceral. We all know what that is right away, don't we? Generosity. Mm. Effort sustained. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. I love that. These are so cool. Okay, emergence. Yeah, I see that. Nine. Hmm. Kingdom prospers. You know, as an ancestral card, which this one sometimes is, I get... Yeah, that really makes sense on some level. Sometimes I don't always see that, and I've heard a lot of people interpreting the Ten of Cups that way lately. Or, sorry, Ten of uh, Discs that way. I've always kind of not had that be like a meaning to come up for me when reading that card, but lately <clears throat> I've started to see it and that one really, somehow that one really says it. I don't, I'm not sure quite how or why. Probably combo of keywords and picture could be maker, princess, gift of creativity. So we've got a pregnant page there. Nice, gift of connection. Gift of healing. Wow, and the gift of skill. These are so beautiful, and I kind of feel like, yes, I'm going to use these for myself for a while, but I also feel like I would totally use these with a client, too, um, which really surprises me. I don't think I felt like that would be possible, but um, these are really immediate. The key for me is always being able to read stuff to clients without freaking them out. <laughs> you know, like... Finding decks that really resonate, you know, powerfully with me, um, and, I, you know, I can, I can resonate with most decks on some level. It's finding ones that really have that kind of deeper felt resonance, I guess, and um, in a way that's, I don't know, in a way that's really, like, immediate. You know what? You, you all know what I'm talking about. What am I trying to say? You guys all know what I mean. Um... And those, of course, are always the most fun to read with. But, yeah, I don't know. It's always trying to find a way to get those decks and read that way um, and have that kind of experience but without freaking out the people <laughs> I read for where it's in person and they can see the deck. So, anyway. Um, and now I've gone and made my nose all red. It's all red. <clears throat> I'm so itchy at the moment because of allergies and Lord only knows what is in the air right now. It's the fall. And it's still hot, but today's a little bit more temperate. So anyway, I feel a little happier about my morning setback now that I've had a chance to go through a new deck. Um, and say hi to all of you lovely people. Uh, so there we go. It's the Tarot of the She. And you can look for more videos to come with the t featuring Tarot of the She, because what a fun, stinking deck to play with. I'm so excited about this deck. All right, guys. Thank you so much. I so appreciate all of you. And, um, and I enjoy our little chats and conversations, which end up happening really ultimately in the comments. So take care, everyone. And I will talk with you soon. Bye.